Welcome back everyone, this is Brian with Faith on Fire. And these three images are probably familiar to you because a lot of Christians have been talking about this event at this conference all over social media, including right here on YouTube. And that would include Spencer Smith and Justin Peters. And I'm going to share some clips from them today. Now, first of all, understand that you've probably already seen the video clip. I will play it. It's less than two minutes long. So if you've seen it, just jump forward to the end. But I want to make a few statements and share some Justin Peters video clips and Spencer Smith about it. So without further ado, and if you've seen it, just jump ahead about two minutes. Here is what happened with Mark Driscoll and this performance. Let me do this. Um... I've been up since one o'clock in the morning. The reason I'm hoarse is I have been praying for you and my heart is very burdened for you. And I want to be very careful with this and it's not what I want to say, but the Jezebel spirit has already been here. The Jezebel spirit opened our event. This is a rebuke and a correction of no one. This is an observation. Before the word of God was open, there was a platform. It was a high place. On it was a pole, an ashram. The same thing that's used in the strip club for women who have the Jezebel spirit to seduce men. In front of that was a man who ripped his shirt off like a woman does in front of a pole at a strip club. That man then ascended. See, our God is not arrogant. He doesn't ascend. Our God is humble. He descends. And then he swallowed a sword and Jesus cried. Okay, Pastor John, I'll receive that. Thank you. Alrighty, there you have it. A lot of people have seen that clip, but now you may not have seen Justin Peters' take on it and Spencer Smith's take on it. Two polar opposite views of the same performance and of the guy who is the performer. And so I found it very strange that Justin Peters would react as favorably as he did to the kind of audience that would tend this type of word of faith, charismatic, evangelical conference. I mean, I would not even go to an event like this because I'm not into this over-the-top entertainment style way of getting people in the door for these kind of conferences. But uh, normally Justin Peters is not for that either. But boy, he must really, really hate Mark Driscoll to make a whole video, in essence, defending the Word of Faith Church in order to discredit Mark Driscoll and call him a liar. Very strange. But let's start with what he had to say about Mark Driscoll. Here it is that Mark Driscoll is, is eager for publicity, this is a publicity stunt, and he is a liar. And Justin would promise to play certain clips in the last basically one third of his video after his interview with Gabe from the What channel, I'll talk about that later. Um, but um, here's what he said. And it will prove beyond any shadow of a doubt that Mark Driscoll is an absolute liar, and he is manifestly both unqualified and disqualified from being in the pulpit. So there's the agenda for his video. It's another Justin Peters typical character assassination hit piece, this time aimed at Mark Driscoll. Well, uh, he's going to have on his program a guy named Gabe who has a channel called What, which stands for When We Understand the Text. And I'm a little familiar with this channel. It would be better named When We Pervert the Text, or maybe better yet, when we disregard the text and promote reform systematic theology instead. <laughs> okay. This is a Calvinist channel, um, and they're also a supporter of, and a friend of Justin Peters, cessationist just like him. And so anyway, l let's get into it. Interesting what they have to say about this performance. Here's the first clip. Gimmickry that is rampant at this conference. I mean, that's all it is, is a bunch of gimmicks and, you know, um, pyrotechnics and a light show and all that kind of stuff. But come on. I mean, this guy's a sword swallower. It's what he does. This is not an Asher pole. I mean, good yeah. grief, right? Yeah. And, and like I said, it turns out that this man does have a past as a stripper and has not just done this 
in front of women. He's done it in front of men. So he's a homosexual. And yet Justin Peters seems to think those of us who think the act was totally inappropriate for a Christian conference are completely blowing it out of proportion. Nothing wrong with this act whatsoever. Uh, you went. You said you went to his website. You look, went to Alex Magala's website? Yeah, and I did not click on any links or pages in there because if he is a stripper, I just don't want to see it. So... <laughs> Well, I wouldn't want to see that either, but I got curious. So I went to the guy's webpage, and he does have a section on his photos, publicity photos of himself. And here's a snapshot from that. Uh, and notice the one picture here. Now, this is key because Justin Peters is trying to defend this guy's act at this Christian conference. And yet, with the guy without his shirt on, moving all around, Justin's trying to defend it this way. I've seen... Some people say that uh, this must have been some kind of a strip-oriented theme uh, because he took his shirt off. Well, that can't really be the reason because at this Stronger Men's Conference, they've, they've had uh, several other events in which men have been without their shirts. Here's one, of course, of two guys boxing without their shirts, as, as you know, typically boxers do. Here's another guy doing weightlifting without his shirt. And here's another guy doing whatever this is without a shirt on. There you go. You can see it all at the Stronger Men's Conference. So just being without a shirt in and of itself cannot possibly have been the reason, at least not a legitimate one. Now, for a different view on this, let's hear from Spencer Smith. Let, let's just be honest, guys. This whole thing was a fiasco. It crossed every biblical line. It crossed moral lines. It crossed just like it was like pretty wild. And so a lot of people have asked, you know, who is this guy? Why did they bring him in? Which I think is a great question. And why even have an event like that at a men's conference? It doesn't make any sense. So I went and looked it up and the guy's name is Alex Magala and he's like a stunt performer. And if you go through his internet history, you'll find this guy is, uh, should not be teaching Sunday school class, even if you go through his Instagram, which I will not hear in this video uh, for your sake. Uh, this guy is um, got a lot of very suggestive material on his uh, on his page. You kind of look at who he is, and there's no evidence this guy is a Christian. Matter of fact, there's a lot of evidence that this guy is was doing all kinds of terrible things and still is doing terrible things in his life. Uh, there's a 2016. Uh, uh, Daily Mail UK article talking about how this man was one of the most popular gay strippers in gay clubs um, years ago. And so, you know, when, when all this evidence is piling up about this guy, why would you have this guy in a men's conference to try to inspire men to live for Jesus? But, you know, whatever there. I would wager to bet there is not a single homosexual in that room. Why, why would they at have least, some? Why, if at they, least not openly, but yeah. At least not openly. Say. Yeah. <laughs> that like that would be to have to have a male stripper come in and perform. That would be the like the last thing they would ever want to have come in at a conference like this, right? Right. It's just like Justin said. I mean, there's not even a homosexual in there. That guy's act is totally on the up and up, totally appropriate for a Christian conference, right? I mean, Justin Peters said it's no different than two guys boxing each other with a shirt off. You know, a guy powerlifting weights with a shirt off or some guy balancing a burning log on his head without a shirt on. It's no different, right? I mean, the guy's, yeah, swinging around a pole without his shirt on and he's, you know, a former stripper. Now, it is true that he used to be a former stripper. Uh, I was not able to find out if he still does that or if he's even repented of that. Hmm, let's see now. I'm going with no, he hasn't repented. Matter of fact, Spencer Smith thinks he goes way beyond just not repenting, but literally blaspheming our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Here's what Spencer said. And uh, does an inverted upside down Jesus on the cross. Um, maybe some weird stuff going on there with that. I'll let you decide. Let your imagination run wild there. But as he's laying there doing the upside down crucifix, the crowd is going wild in front of him. And uh, Mark Driscoll got up and, uh, and called this out. And despite Justin Peters' repeated defense of this man's act as nothing more than a masculine show of strength, 
and daring, his own guest had this to say about that crowd. So it's a goat farm. It's a big circus performance. It's yeah. entertaining the goats. It's not, uh, it's not preaching the gospel. That's right. That's right. And Justin agreed. He said, that's right. But remember, he was willing to put money on something here. I would wager to bet there is not a single homosexual in that room. This man was one of the most popular gay strippers in gay clubs. Now, I'm going to read part of Alex Magala's Twitter response to this whole brouhaha. Because as the entertainer that he is, he wants to justify what he was doing. So he responded to all this and he ends his Twitter message with this. I'll show you on the screen. I am a Christian, really, and have always aimed to use my talents to inspire and entertain audiences in a way that respects my faith. The act in question was designed to be a celebration of physical human achievements and is aligned with the James River Church's purpose in bringing others into the light of God. It's essential to approach such performances with an understanding of their intention rather than reducing them to mere entertainment. And he ended with, also Pastor Mark Driscoll conveniently didn't mention two other top list performers of that night. Now, I didn't see that either. I don't think I want to. But um, this part about reducing his act to just mere entertainment. What does he think he was brought there for? He is an entertainer, a performer. Okay, my final thoughts on this is going to have to do with charismatics, the move of the Holy Spirit in a given moment, Mark Driscoll and the pastor, uh, John Lindell. And this is what happened when he went up there after kicking Mark Driscoll off. Basically, the crowd booed him. So number one, they were well receiving the rebuke and the correction by Mark Driscoll, even though they're the ones attending this entertainment and everything. They apparently seem to agree with this and want to hear more. So they're booing Pastor John Lindell for kicking him off. And he's trying to do damage control there. So Pastor John Lindell is basically pulling out the Matthew 18 church discipline card which is totally inappropriate in a conference setting with multiple congregations, multiple speakers from different that you have history with. You've already vetted them out over years of being in ministry partnership with them. You're not asking them to submit a script before they get up there. You're not asking to check everything that they're going to say before they get up and speak. And if it's a charismatic church, there should be a movement of the Holy Spirit allowed in a moment for someone to shift on a dime and go in the direction that they feel the Holy Spirit is leading them to speak. How can that be off the table and inappropriate at a charismatic church conference? I mean, that's mind boggling to me. And interesting that Justin Peters and Gabe, his guest, seemed to side with Pastor John Lindell on that, thinking that was an appropriate rebuke of Mark Driscoll. I totally disagree with that assessment. I don't think you can apply Matthew 18 church discipline to a church conference. After all, people are paying money to go to this from God knows what denomination or background. It's not like it's church on Sunday and you have a church leadership and a congregation and members. You don't pay money to get in the door of your Sunday church service. But this is a conference. I don't know of any conference that is free. I mean, I'm assuming there was money spent to get in the door. So how in that kind of a setting with multiple different speakers, a, a an audience that's paying to get in, how do you exercise church discipline per Matthew 18 in that setting? No, no, totally, totally a wrong, wrong call there. So that's all I got to say about that. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm looking forward to your comments. Please let me know what you think of conferences like this. Let me know what you think about Justin Peters' take on it versus Spencer Smith's take on it. Please give this a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're new to the channel, and I'll see you in another video real soon. Thanks for watching, everyone, and may the peace and love of Jesus Christ be with you now and forever. Amen.